Someone asked me why I don't make my own couplings. It's not that I can't do it. Oh, I could easily do it. Problem is, I gotta have the time to make the pattern. It'll have to be made oversized to be machined back down in certain areas, including machined out, broached, or drilled. Greg, my mailman, delivered this today. This ought to fix this up, fix and install it. If you saw uh, Keith Rucker's video a couple weeks ago, I believe he showed that on his YouTube. Uh, he took a tour of Lauren Langdon's shop. And uh, if you look here, Keith sent me a picture of these. These are, you put them in a tumbler and they roll around with a casting and clean them up really good. And as I've said in a, my earlier video, I am getting a tumbler. Uh, I've got to wait for my next window of opportunity to get it shipped, but this is what they look like. And I'm going to use these as a general pattern. That one's got an inclusion. That's a reject. Anyway, I want to thank Lauren. Uh, I will be using these as patterns to make my own. This is the piece that originally broke the first time around. It is the same size as the upper coupling except for the ID. And it fits right in here, just like that, with absolutely no backlash. And it keeps constant pressure once it's pushed together. It's got good contact on both sides of that spider, so it won't be twisting and getting gnarled up in there. After we finish that, we're going to mull up some sand and get a couple molds made and get these things poured. I've got a lot of people screaming for their stuff now, and I can't blame them. This is uh, just part of my world. Okay, I'm down here at the storage area, and I can't remember which cabinet has what in it. I've got one cabinet here that's got a whole bunch of 3 8 16 bolts. Snakes come rolling out. Ah! I am so glad I brought you guys along. It pays to read comments. And someone is always going to have a lot better idea than I am. And I'm bad about having tunnel vision. I'll be the first to admit it. I will be so focused on one little thing, I completely disregard the surroundings. And man, if I could only tell you how many times I've been in trouble with a wife because of that. This guy suggested I just put a longer bolt in here, and that gives me plenty of room to just slide this motor straight out and, uh, and work on it without having to go through the straps. Now, I'm probably going to go ahead and I'm probably going to put these down here. And I didn't torque them this time, so... <laughs> So let's do that. I'm going to put these long bolts down here because if I don't, that flange, because of the head on this bolt, it's not going to let it drop enough. I need it to also kind of drop down as I go. So, But yeah, it pays to read your comments. But these are 3 8 inch bolts. And... Uh, That's going to work out just right. Buddy is nowhere in sight. Knock on wood. Hope it stays that way. Hopefully he's hanging out and staying cool at Dad's. Even though they're his dogs, uh, they stay here 90% of the time. <laughs> Even when we're not home, I don't get it. I wasn't feeding them, you know. Yet they like to hang out here. I hate to cut my Allen wrench. Certain order of operations. 
Kind of like the fox a bag of corn and the chicken. If you have a narrow bridge that you can only take one item across at a time and you have to cross a creek and you got a bag of corn, a fox, and a chicken, there's a certain order you have to take those in. So if you take the bag of corn first, the fox will eat the chicken. So the solution to that is to take the chicken first, cross the bridge, because the fox will not eat the bag of corn. Sit it down, go back across the bridge, grab the fox, pick it up, take it across the bridge, set it down, and pick the chicken back up, take it across the bridge, go across, set it down, grab the corn, bring it across, set it down by the fox, and then you can come back and get the chicken, and none of the three can eat each other, or none of the, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, you get what I'm saying. I'm going to knock off here in about a half hour and start making homemade ice cream. I invited my dad over at 7 o'clock. I'll be off the part-time day job Monday, so I'll be able to get some more work done here. Look at that. Bump this off. some raised material right here also on the inside of this uh, is what appears to be uh, black nitride and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm lightly finger honing it out Let's see if that works better there we go You might want to hold some pressure on that. I don't want it smashing my finger. Okay, you can ease off on it. All right. Okay. If you look right here, I'm trying to jack and get the distance right here. So I've got it pretty well to where the top is parallel on this side as it would be on the back side. Looks like it's more in line now. And uh, from here, I'm going to cut a strap and drill it. And we're going to anchor it to this one of these two holes here. That boat was a little too long. All right, as usual, I'm gonna make a few changes, but uh, I'm just gonna cut this. I've already got the hole drilled. So I'm gonna cut this to length, butt weld that, and uh, one bolt's gonna be fine. Okay, now the proper way to do this would be to bolt these back in place on the muller and tack weld them. 
that means dragging my welding leads and everything else up in the building and there is a good layer of oil on the bottom of that muller now we're fixing to go to a fourth of july celebration and uh I don't want to leave this place unattended after welding on something that oily. Jim Bollinger, eat your heart out. Yep. That'll be an Instagram prize winning photo there for sure. All right. Got her up there. Got it anchored. Couplings looking good. So we've got some stability on the right side along with the left side with in and out because that's a piece of angle. So that will that'll make this a lot more rigid, less rinky dink for sure. So all I gotta do is jam that coupling up tight, uh, snug up the set screws, and we are ready to run this thing. Let's put it to the coupling banging test here. Oh yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. Yep. Not a wiggle in sight. Loving it. Okay, this is the test. I think I got everything tight now. I hope so. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're fixing to push the button on it. I don't have sand in there. This is with a load in it. And one of the things I noticed a second ago, that top shaft floats up when it first starts. So this shaft is floating up and down. So it's already deforming a little bit there. Start adding some water to it. wondering about making some clamps to put from the top down to here just to keep it squeezed all right we're getting closer off to pull that out again There goes the power. That's it. I drew a circle around just to make sure that I don't cut into the wear areas here. This is the size of the boss. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing on here and get some sand mold tonight. So we got a load. I got a bucket of sand in here. We're gonna see what happens. Well, hey, Jake. What you looking to steal? Jake, come here. 
What you got? Huh? All right, y'all watch this sleeve. Give you a better view of it. I'm gonna fill that basket with uh, some pretty good sized chunks. Hey, this is about 150 pounds of sand. So here we go. And it got all my cockroaches out, vent wires. So I'm not mowing cockroaches, whatever you call these little beetles. Yeah, that one's still alive. Dollar's been eating those. I don't know where she's at. But anyway, uh, yeah. Handy little deal here. Uh, it looks as if I've got very big mesh wire here, but I actually have a window screen laying on top of that. So, uh, hold on a second and I'll winch this up out of the way and show you the results. All right, I got it tied back up I got it on a uh, snatch block up there if you can see and I just pull it up and down with rope as I need to and this is what we just saved 300 pounds and I'll see if I can get this up closer anyway does an awesome job that's several hours worth of manual work right there that this thing did in a matter of minutes as we say down here tickled pink over the sieve along with the muller the muller I've, I've i have run it some tonight made up some more molds and uh it seems to be doing fine knock on wood i mean knock on some wood but uh yeah it hopefully will hold up now for a while. Somebody, I've had several people make the statement that I need to use a chain coupling. Uh, and I think you're right. Based off of the design of a chain coupling and based off of what I'm dealing with here, yes, I, I totally agree. And as soon as this tears up, that will be the next retrofit. But, uh, you know, let's not kill the old mule yet. Let's, let's see how many miles we can get out of it. And if I didn't already point this out, check out all these rivets. The square nuts. The steam-bent wood yoke that goes all the way up. And comes back down and it is steam bent very tight grain looks like mahogany and it has a cast iron crossbar here that supports the out of balance flywheel so uh yeah i am uh i'm very happy with this and you can see the screen a little better now use my trusty old foil tape around it because it was missing the threaded bar and with my welding skills i made a a, a new binder with a nut on the back so 
that draws that up really tight around this. You can loosen that and as you can see this has handles and this mesh will come out and you can put another one in I guess is the way that works. If anybody has seen any hoops laying around in an antique store that have these handles on them that's what this uh, th this contraption is what that goes on and if you would grab it for me tell me how much you paid I will reimburse you I would like to have several different rings to go back in this I have hunted the internet high and low and I cannot find anything close to this thing I hope you had a great holiday and uh, didn't eat too much the spider uh, that is an elastomeric spider. It is not going to work for long. And I didn't know this. I can get that spider in other materials along with brass and bronze. And there again, I don't have time to be casting those. So I'm not going to do a Mueller report three. Two is enough. Also, I had said that I was going to include a mold and a pour this video. Well, it didn't work out. I've got the molds made. I want to make a couple more before I fire the furnace. It's just not timing out right with this video. So I'll have you one next week. It'll probably be the continuation of what I started yesterday. I'm going to do these videos a little differently. And we're going to try it like this. As is. Whatever I'm working on that week is going to go on the video. In the past, what I've always tried to do is a beginning to end on a mold through to the casting. Sometimes uh, in the future that's going to be missed. I mean it'll be covered if it wasn't covered this week it'll be covered next week. Regardless you can always go back to the video right before to catch up. Y'all be careful and I hope y'all have a wonderful weekend. What are you thinking Dollar? Huh? What's on that little mind of yours? <laughs>